All right, welcome to another pre-AMC8 video for the Sammy YouTube channel. As always, I'm Olivia, and let's get started. So we've got a rectangle ABCD and a parallelogram EFGH inside that rectangle. And we want to use the measurements given in the figure to find the length of this line segment here, that's D. Um, yeah, and as we know it's perpendicular to HE and FG. All right, well, how are we gonna go about finding that? It's kind of an odd figure, right? It's, it's not a great drawing, but it kind of like, it doesn't touch the corners of A, B, C, D at all. So the way we can do it though is, is recognize that, oh look, because it's perpendicular to both sides of the parallelogram, it's going to be the height of that par parallelogram, right? Even though it's sideways, that's the height. So, that's something to keep in mind. So, let's get started. What do we know about our shapes? Well, we can see right away that here we've got side 4, side 3, 5, 6, 4, 3, 5, 6. Okay, that means we've got some triangles. Right? I noticed a triangle with side 3, side 4. It's a right triangle because of our rectangle. So, by Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse, the long edge, that's going to have um that's going to have the length 3 squared plus 4 squared. So that has length 25. 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25. Take the square root. This has length 5. Okay? So now we know that a parallelogram has five has a length of five on one of its sides, two of its sides actually, because we've got another three, four, five triangle. Okay, what's more is we can find some areas, right? Right away we can see that this rectangle ABCD has length four plus six, that's ten by five by five plus three, that's eight. So it's a ten by eight rectangle. That's a total area of eighty, right? Okay got a rectangle with area 80. We've got two 4 by 3 rec 4 by 3 triangles. So those triangles have area 3 times 4 divided by 2, right? Triangle has area base times height divided by 2. So one triangle, one 3 by 4 triangle has area 6. So to combine they'll have area 12. And then our other triangles, the 5 by 6 triangle, that's going to have area 5 times 6 divided by 2, which is 15. And there's two of them, so they're going to have a combined area of 30. So that means our two triangles with area 12, we've got two triangles with area 15. So combined, those four triangles have area 12 plus 30. That is 30, or 42. Okay, and if that's the case... Then our parallelogram, right, that's going to have area equal to the area of the entire rectangle ABCD minus the four triangles, right, minus all of this space. When you take away all of that, all that's left is the parallelogram, right? So we'll do 80 minus 42, and we'll get 38 as the area of the parallelogram. Okay, well, how would you find the area of the parallelogram? The parallelogram has area base times height, right? Base times height. And we know already know that it has base five, right? Because it has base that's equal to the hypotenuse of the three, four, five triangle. So five times D, D is our height, that's what we're looking for, is 38. All right, solving for D, we can divide both sides of our equation by five. D is 38 divided by five. Doing that math, we get 7 and 3 over 5, 7 and 3 fifths, 3 fifths, or we could keep going, wait, 38 divided by 5, this is getting kind of messy, 7, 35, 3 left over, 0 0.0, 5 goes into 30 6 times, so here we've got 7.6 as our answer. All right. We have two 4 by 4 squares that intersect at right angles and bisecting their intersecting sides as shown. Okay, 
The circle's diameter is the segment between the two points of intersection. What is the area of the shaded region created by moving the circle from the squares? By removing the circle from the squares. Okay, so we want to find the area of the circle, right? And subtract it from the area of the squares. Well, we can see, right, it's a 4 by 4 square. And we know that they bisect each other. So that means here we've got part of our square. That would have area. Here's a 4, here's a 4, and it's being bisected. So this is a 2 by 2. Right? And then our other one will have another 2 and a 4 and a 4. So how would we find the area of this without considering the circle? Like pretending that the circle's not there. Well, we could break this kind of double diamond shape into a couple different shapes, right? We could break it like this. So we've got one diamond and one partial diamond. And then also break it like this. So we've got two more rectangles. Okay, so that area would be our four by four. Here's 16. This has area 16. Here is four by two, right? It's bisected. That has area eight. And finally, two by two, this part has area four, right? It's cut in half here, so two by two. Okay, so the total area, if the circle wasn't there, that would be if everything is shaded, our total area would be 28. Okay, now we need to find the area of the circle. So, we know the circle intersects at the 2 mark. So, this has length 2, this has length 2. So, is there a way we could find the circle's diameter? Could we find this length here, all the way across? So, we know our circle, our total shaded region if the circle weren't there if everything was shaded that would be 28 so what about our circle let's draw this out so we know we've got our one diamond here if that were to keep going it would go all the way to the edge of the circle right and then we have our other diamond here so we know that because the circle is bisecting the two points of intersection intersection this has length two like we already discussed that would be this right here has length two and so does this has length two that also means though that this little dot 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 line has length two as well and this over here has length two okay well now if i draw this line here between that would be here right down the middle of the circle we notice that there's a triangle, right? Here's two, here's two, and then we have our hypotenuse. So what's the length of that hypotenuse, the long side straight down the circle? Well, remember our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared. So it would be two squared plus two squared is going to equal that hypotenuse squared. So that's four plus four. And eight is our hypotenuse squared. So our hypotenuse, we take the square root, square root of 8 equals the hypotenuse. So this right here has length square root of 8. All right, so that length is, that, this is the diameter, which is really helpful, because if we know the diameter, we can find the area of the circle. Remember, the area of the circle is radius squared times pi, and the radius is going to be half our diameter, so the square root of 8 over 2 times the square root of 8 over 2, that would be 8 over 4, right? 8 over 4 is the same as 2 times pi, right? We still need the pi for the area of a circle. So now we've got both components that we're looking for to solve this problem. We want the area of the two diamonds if the circle weren't there, minus the area that's being taken up by the circle. So we've got our 28 for the diamonds, our 2 pi for the circle, and so the shaded region is going to be the 28 minus the circle. 28 minus 2 pi. Okay, Connie multiplies a number by 2 and gets 60. 
However, she should have divided the number by 2 to get the correct answer. Ooh, so what was the correct answer? Okay, so let's figure this out. So Connie has a start number, we'll just call that n, and she multiplies it by 2. So 2 times n, and she gets 60 as an answer. But what we want is, we, we know that she should have divided the number by 2. So it's instead of 2 times n, she should have had n divided by 2. That's what we're looking for. All right, so let's figure out what n is, right, first. Like, what number did Connie start with? Well, we know that 2n, 2 times n, is 60. We can use that to solve for n, right? Divide both sides of the equation by 2. That'd be n equals 30. All right, so that's the number that Connie started with. She started with the number 30. And we know that she should have divided her number by 2. So she should have divided 30 by 2. 30 divided by 2, that's 15. Answer choice B. All right. Carl bought five three-ring binders from Pay a Lot at a cost of $2.50 each. So helpful to write things down. We've got five binders. They're $2.50 each. Pay a Lot had a 20% off sale the following day. Oh, so we missed the discount. How much could Carl have saved on purchase on the purchase by waiting a day? All right. So let's see how much Carl spent because he went a day before the discount. Well, he bought five binders and they cost two fifty each. So he paid a of paid a total of two fifty times five. That is twelve dollars and fifty cents. Okay. And then we found out that Paylot had a 20% off sale the following day. So instead of $2.50, it should be 20% off, right? 20% off of 100%? That means, so originally they cost 100% of their cost, so originally they cost $2.50, and now it's minus 20% of that cost. So we're looking for 80% of the original price. That's how much the binders are going to pay on the discount day, on the sale day. Okay, so we want 80% of $2.50. So we multiply it by 0.8. Put another zero. So we get that on the sale day, the binders cost $2 each instead of $2.50. Okay. So, if they cost $2 and Carl bought 5, instead of spending $2.50, he'd spend 2 times $5, that's $10, instead of $12.50. Okay, so how much would he have saved? Well, he'd save the $12.50 minus $10, right, minus the amount he would have paid, that gives us $2.50. So, Carl would have saved $2.50 if he'd waited a day. What's the minimum number of small squares that must be colored black so a large square has diagonal BD as a line of symmetry? So we want we want this line as a line of symmetry. Okay, that means that if you like if you took that both lines, if you folded the paper on that line and then flattened the paper together, that it should look the same on both sides. Right? And that might be a little hard to visualize, but basically you'll get it with practice, right? So if this square is shaded, which we see that it is, that means its opposite on the other side should also be shaded. So this square also needs to be shaded to be symmetrical. Okay, what's another thing? We see that this square is shaded, so we need its opposite to also be shaded. That would be the line right across from it, right here. So that would also need to be shaded. Okay, what's well, another example? This line here, looking right across, doo -doo -doo, we know that this also needs to be shaded. This line is shaded, going across, this line also needs to be shaded, or that box. Okay, and finally, we have this box, and since it's on both sides of the line, it is its own symmetry partner, so it's symmetric to itself, so there's nothing else that we need to shade in for that. So, how many squares need to be colored black? 
that would be the number of squares that are shaded in that are already black. So here's one red dot, two, three, four. Answer choice D. A square and a triangle have the same perimeters, and the lengths of the three sides of the triangle are 6.1, 8.2, and 9.7. We want to know the area of the square. Okay, so if our square and our triangle, let me draw this out, here's a square, here's our triangle. If they have the same perimeters, that means the lengths of their sides need to add up, right? So our triangle has sides 6.1, 8.2, and 9.7. Adding those up, 9.7, that adds up to 24. So that means all of our sides of our square need to add up to 24. Okay, well, our square has, our square's sides are all the same length, right? A square has equal sides. So we can divide our 24 by 4 to figure out the length of the square side. 24 divided by 4 is 6, so that means all of our, our square has sides that equal all 6. And we can see that in action, right? So if we have 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, that's 24, and so our square has the same perimeter as the triangle. Okay, now we want the area of the square. So that would be 6 times 6, our uh, length times our width, 6 times 6 makes 36 as our triangle's area, that's answer choice C. Okay, soda is sold in packs of 6, 12, and 24. What is the minimum number of packs needed to buy exactly 90 cans of soda? Okay, so we want to buy as few packs as possible. So how do we get to 90 the fastest using 6, 12, and 24? Well, let's see if we can get there with 24, right? Because that's our biggest amount. So we have 24, that's one pack, plus another 24, that gets us to 48 cans of soda. And we've used two packs to do it. Okay. What if we use another 24? Because we're not quite at 90 yet. That gets us to 72 packs, to 72 cans of soda, and we've used three packs. Adding another 24... Ooh, now we're at 96, so we can't do that. We can't add a fourth pack of 24. All right, so from 72, how can we get to 90 now? Well, what if we added 12, our next biggest size? 72 plus 12, that's 84. Now we're at four packs. Okay, and what do we need to add to 84 to get to 90? Well, that's six. 84 plus six is 90. That's how we'll get to 90 cans of soda, and that took us five packs. And we know that because we increased, we used our biggest packs first, and they're all multiples of each other, right? So buying one pack of 24 is the same as buying two packs of 12, right? Because two packs of 12 will be 24 cans, just like one pack of 24 is 24 cans. So because they're all multiples of each other, we know this is the fastest way by using the biggest packs first. How many values of D is 2.00 D5 more than 2.005? All right, let's do some comparison. We've got 2.005 and then 2.00 something five. So let's figure out what goes in this missing spot right here. So we know if that, if that number is less than five, like if it's a one, two, three, or four, or a zero, it's not gonna be as big as our first number, right? It would be smaller, like 2.0045. That's not as big as 2.005. So zero, one, two, three, and four, they don't work, don't work. Okay, what if we made that a five? Which one's bigger, 2.0055 or 2.005? Well, our five makes this number bigger, right? Because this is the same as adding a zero to the end, and this is the same as with a five. Five is more than zero, so adding a five makes 
adding a 5 for D makes that number bigger. So 5 works. So it works, we have 5. And anything bigger than 5 would work as well, right? Because if it's bigger, it's going to add more value. So a 6 would work, so would a 7, an 8, and a 9. So that's 5 values that would work. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Answer choice C. Bill walks half a mile south, then three-fourths three fourths of a mile east, and finally half a mile south. How many miles is he in a direct line from his starting point? So let's draw that out, because that's kind of a lot. So we'll make this star his starting point, and now we know he goes half a mile south. Okay, this is where it's helpful to know directions, right? I'm going to draw a little compass, compass in the corner, north, south, east, and west. If you don't have that memorized, that's okay. It's really helpful to do. Here are our directions. So we know that Bill's going to go half a mile south. So that's downwards. Here's south, and we'll say that's half a mile. Okay, now we've got three quarters of a mile east. So that's to the right. Do it a little longer. That's three, out of, three over four. Okay, and lastly, another half mile south. Okay, and now we want to know his distance from his starting point. So that would be this distance here, right? The straight line distance, not the path traveled distance. Okay, so how would we find that straight line? Well, we know Bill walked a total of three-fourths of a mile east and half a mile plus half a mile south. So in total, he walked one mile south, right? Well, now we have a triangle, right? We can use that triangle to figure out the length of the hypotenuse. That would be the total, the distance from his starting point. Okay, remember our Pythagorean theorem. We've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, our a will be one, our b will be three quarters, and we'll solve for the hypotenuse. One squared is one, Three quarters squared, three over four times three over four, that's nine over 16, equals c squared. Okay, one is equal to 16 over 16, so we'll have 16 over 16 plus nine over 16. That's gonna equal 25 over 16, that's c squared. So we wanna take the square root of 25 over 16. Square root of 25 is five, square root of 16 is four, so we've got five over four, that's his distance from his starting point. Writing that out as a mixed number, we get one and one fourth. Answer choice B. Suppose M and N are odd positive integers, which of the following must also be an odd integer? Okay, let's remember some facts. I'm gonna draw out two diagrams. We've got odd plus odd equals even, even plus odd is odd, odd plus even is odd, and even plus even is even. Okay, and then for multiplication, odd times odd is odd, odd times even is even, even times odd is even, and even times even is even. All right, let's work that out with our question. So we have m plus 3n for a. So we know m is odd. We have odd plus 3, which is odd, times n, which is also odd. So from our chart, we can see odd times odd is odd. So odd times odd will become odd. And now we have odd plus odd. And also from our other chart, we see odd plus odd makes even. So that is even. So A is not correct. Okay, what about B? We have 3 times M, odd times odd, minus odd. Odd times odd, again, is odd. Odd minus odd, that's even. So just like it's odd plus odd is even, the same will be odd minus odd is even. So B is out. Now we have 3 times M times N. So odd times odd times odd. Odd times odd is odd. 
So now we have another odd times odd. Odd times odd, again, is odd. So that's what we wanted. An odd in choice C is correct. Okay, now we've got a quadrilateral and we know some things about it, right? So let's draw that in. So we have 17, 17, 10, and 10, and then a 60 degree angle. And this length here is what we want to find, that dotted line. So something to note, let's draw out triangle ACD. So that would be the dotted line and then the 60 degree angle. Here's ACD, 17 and 17. Because we have two side lengths that are the same, these two 17s, that makes this triangle isosceles or equilateral. So either there's two side lengths that are the same or three. But because we've got two equal side lengths, that means these two angles are also going to be equal because of those two side lengths being equal. So because we know one angle in the triangle, that's the 60 degrees, we can solve for the other two. So a triangle has 180 degrees. We know that there's 60 degrees already accounted for in the triangle, so we have 120 left. And that 120 degrees is split between the two angles. So 120 divided by 2, that's 60. So the triangle has 60 degrees for each of its angles, right? Because these two angles are the same and they have to be 60. So now we've got a triangle with equal angles which means this triangle is equilateral. And if two of those angles are 17, that means that third, or two of the sides are 17, that third side is also 17. That means AC is 17. Answer choice, D. Okay, Joe walked halfway from home to school when he realized he was running late. Okay, let's draw that out. Here we've got home. Here we've got school. And when Joe gets halfway, he realizes he's running late. So it took him six minutes to get halfway because he was walking. And then he ran three times as fast as he walked to get the rest of the way. So if it took him six minutes to get halfway walking, how long is it going to take him to get the other halfway running? Well, it's going three times as fast. So it's going to take him three times less time, right? He's going three times as fast, so we need a third of the time. Six divided by three. He's going three times faster. It's going to take him not as long. Six divided by three. It's actually only going to take him two minutes. Right? Because two times three will be six. So him going three times faster makes it a third of the time. So we've got six minutes walking for the first halfway plus two minutes running the second halfway. 6 plus 2 is going to be 8 total minutes of travel for Joe. Takes him 8 minutes to get from home to school. Sales tax in Bergville is 6%. And during a sale of the Bergville coat closet, a coat is discounted to be 20% off of its $890 price. And then the two clerks calculate the bill independently, and Jack rings up. $90 and adds 6% sale tax, and Jill does things the other way around. She subtracts the 20% and then adds the 6%. Okay? So let's draw out what they're both doing. So Jack is going to add 6% sales tax. So Jack's going to take the $90, and he's going to make it 106%. So he's going to add 6%, and a way we could show that being done is by multiplying the $90 by 1.06. Right, it's going to keep 100% and add 6%. Then, he's going to subtract 20%. So, what's left after he subtracts 20% is 80%, right? So we got 100% minus 20% would be 80%. So then he'll multiply that by 0.8 for the 80%, right? Okay, what about Jill? Jill's going to start with the $90, and then she's going to subtract 20%. So she's going to end up with 80%, multiplying it by 0.8, right? That'll give us 80%. Then she'll add the 6% sales tax. So she'll multiply it by 1.06. That'll give us the 6% sales tax. 
So what do we notice about what's happening here? Well, in both Jack and Jill's case, they're taking the 90 and then multiplying it by the same numbers, but just in a different order. But no matter what order you multiply numbers in, you're still going to get the same answer, right? 4 times 3 times 2 is the same as 4 times 2 times 3. Because multiplication has that property. It doesn't matter the order. If you multiply numbers, you'll always get the same answer. So 90 times 1.06 times 0.8 is the same as 90 times 0.8 times 1.06. So the difference of, the, of what they end up with is 0 because they both got the same answer. Okay, now we've got Big Al the Ape. So he ate 100 bananas from May 1st through May 5th. And each day he ate six more bananas than on the previous day. And we want to know how many bananas Big Al ate on May 5th. So let's draw this out. Here we've got May 1st, May 2nd, May 3rd, May 4th, and May 5th. On May 1st, we don't know how many bananas Big Al ate on that day, right? Let's say it was X, because we don't know for sure. Well, we know that on the next day, May 2nd, Big Al ate six more bananas, so X plus six. The next day, he, had, he ate six more than that, so X plus six plus six, which we can just write as X plus 12, right? That's the same as X plus six plus six. May 4th, same thing, adding another six, we have X plus 18, and on May 5th, we have X plus another six, X plus 24. Okay. Adding all of those up, if we add it up, x plus x plus 6 plus x plus 12 plus x plus 18 plus x plus 24, we get 100. Okay, let's see if we can simplify that. We have 6 plus 12 plus 18 plus 24, that's 60. Right, adding that up, we get 60. And then we have x plus x plus x plus x plus x, that's 5x's. So 5x plus 60 equals 100. Okay, can we solve for x? We can subtract 60 from both sides of the equation, so we then get 5x equals 40, and then we can divide both sides of the equation by 5 and get x equals 8. Okay, so that means on the first day, Big Al ate 8 bananas, but we want to solve for the fifth day, May 5th, so we want x plus 24. Remember, x is 8, so Al, on the fifth day, ate 8 plus 24, that's 32 bananas. Answer choice D. Okay, we've got the Little 12 Basketball Conference, and we've got two divisions. I'm going to split those up. So, six teams in each division. And each team, draw out our teams, plays each of the teams in its own division twice, and each of the teams in the other division once. Okay, so let's draw out how many games are happening. So let's start with the games that are happening within each division. So let's start with this division, right? That points to a specific one, but we've got here, let's say, Division 1. Okay, in Division 1, we'll have the first team is going to play the five other teams. So going to play the five other teams. The next team is going to play... The four teams that it hasn't played yet, right? Because it already played the first team. The team after that will play the three teams it hasn't played yet, those three. The next team will play the two teams it hasn't played yet. And the final team will play the one other team it hasn't played. So when all of the teams have played each other once, they'll have played 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. That is 15 games. 15 games. But they're going to all play each other twice. So this is going to happen two times. So that'll be a total of 30 games. And the same thing is going to happen on the other side in Division 2. The same kind of process with everybody playing each other. So that's another 30 games. Okay. After that, the teams need to play the other teams in the other division. So let's start with this team. They need to play the six other teams. Here's the six other teams. So that's going to be six games. 
This next team needs to play the six other teams. That's another six games. And the same is going to happen for this team, this team, this team, and this team. So the six teams in Division 1 need to play the six teams in Division 2. That's 36 more games that'll happen. So, adding that all up, we've got the 30 games played in Division 1, the 30 games played in Division 2, and the 36 games that are played between D- Division 1 and Division 2. So that's a total of 96 games that are played in the conference. How many different isosceles triangles have integer side lengths and perimeter 23? Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means we've got two side lengths that are the same and one side length that's different. So they need to add up to 23 and they need to have integer side lengths and they have to be isosceles triangles. So for the triangles to be isosceles, we've got, we'll say side A and then the two side Bs. For a triangle to exist, A plus B is going to have to be bigger than B. And that's always going to happen, so that's okay. So let's figure out all of the cases where the uh, triangles have perimeter 23. Okay, let's start where the two side, the two equal sides have length 20, 11, right? If they have length 11 and another one of length 11, that means that they add up to 22, so the other tr- side has length 1. Right? So that'd be two really long sides and one short side. So that's one case where we have 11, 11, and 1. Okay. What about when the two equal sides are 10? Size 10 and 10. Then they'll add up to 20, and so the other side will be will have a size of 3. 10, 10, and 3. Okay. 9, 9, and what's going to add up to 23? 5. Another case, 9, 9, 5. Okay. 8, 8, 7. And now we get to 7, 7, and 9. So something we need to make sure of is that our shape is always a triangle. So what does that mean? That means that let's say our long side had length 22, right? Or no, 20. One. If our long side had length 21, then we've got the two equal sides have length 1 each, right? 1 and 1. But this doesn't work, right? Because those two sides can't connect to each other. They're too far apart. So that wouldn't be a triangle where our, odd, where our unequal side had length 21 and the two equal sides had length 20. That doesn't work. Okay? So let's always make sure that the two sides added up together, the length added up together, is bigger than the third side. Okay, what about 6, 6, and 11? That still works, right? Because our two sides that are isosceles will add up to 12, so they'll touch, and the other side will be 11. Our next one, though, 5, 5, and 13, doesn't work. That doesn't work. Because 5 and 5, even if they're attached in a straight line, that only makes a length of 10, not 13. So they couldn't connect. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cases that works. Answer choice C.
even plus odd equals odd, odd plus even is odd, even plus even is even. Okay, that's for addition. Okay, what about multiplication? Odd times 